So we've been investigating random variables, and we now know what a random variable is. It's just the outcome of some experiment, and it's literally just a number. So we do an experiment, we get out some number, do another experiment, get out some number, etc. Random variables can be classified according to what type of a random variable they are, and those two types are discrete random variables and continuous random variables. If the random variable that we're dealing with only takes on some countable set of values, that is what we call a discrete random variable. So for instance, when rolling dice, you always get the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. That is a set of 6 values that it can take on, and those are the only 6 values we ever see. So those are the discrete values that our random variable takes on, so we would call that a discrete random variable. In digital communication systems, we're usually concerned with noise. Noise, usually at any point in time, has a random variable between minus infinity and infinity, and it can take on any number in between those ranges, so it can actually take on the value 1.23456, etc. So most of the noise that we deal with in digital communication systems is a continuous random variable, meaning that it is possible for that random variable to take on any value within some range of numbers. The range of numbers for noise is typically between minus infinity and plus infinity. So far when describing random variables, we've kept things fairly simple. The probabilities that we computed have come down to computing probabilities of events. For example, we might let the event A be the event that when I roll the dice, I get a number greater than or equal to 3. We've done some simple computations on how you compute things related to events, and we were mainly wanting to compute the probability of event A, or the probability of event A and B, things like that. A little bit more generally, when we talk about random variables, we have some functions that help us describe the statistical characteristics of these random variables. And these two functions that are very useful are the cumulative distribution function, abbreviated CDF, and the probability density function, abbreviated PDF. So these functions help us characterize how a random variable behaves. And in fact, when talking about random variables, usually the way that we quantify a specific one is to actually write down the mathematical form of its CDF or PDF. For the random variables that we encounter in digital communication system, most of the time we're dealing with Gaussian random variables. Gaussian random variables have a third function that kind of come along with them called the Q function. So when dealing specifically with a random variable that is what we call a Gaussian random variable, not only does a Gaussian random variable have a CDF and a PDF, there's also this function called the Q function that helps statistically describe this random variable. And we'll talk about all three of these things in general, and then specifically for the case of Gaussian, we'll talk about the Q function. So let's talk about the cumulative distribution function first. The CDF of a random variable X is defined as the following. In terms of notation, we use a capital F to indicate this function. And then the subscript on the capital F tells us what random variable we're dealing with. So here we're dealing with the random variable capital X. So as a subscript, we put a capital X right there. If we were dealing with the random variable Z, we would put a capital Z right here, etc. This function has just one argument, and we let the argument here be lowercase x. And what this function does is it computes the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to the argument x. And what we're doing here is we're actually computing the probability of an event. So really what we're doing here is computing the probability that the event, our random variable x, is less than or equal to some number, the probability of that event occurring. So the CDF tells us nothing, nothing more than just the probability that a random variable is less than or equal to some number. So this notation right here, fx of a, that is just shorthand for the probability that my random variable x is less than or equal to some number. The CDF has a variety of properties that are useful. The first one is that the CDF is always greater than or equal to zero, and that follows just from the definition of the CDF. Since the CDF, when evaluated at some value little x, just tells us a probability of an event, probabilities are never negative. The smallest they can be is zero, so that means by definition the CDF always has to be greater than or equal to zero. Similarly, the probability that a random variable is less than or equal to infinity is always true. We, we, when we do random experiments, we get a value for a random number. That number is always less than infinity, because infinity is the largest value you can have. So the probability that a random variable is less than infinity is equal to 1. 
That is always true. Similarly, random variables are always greater than negative infinity. So just from the definition of the CDF, it follows that f of x evaluated at minus infinity is equal to zero. Random variables will never be less than negative infinity. They'll always be greater than negative infinity. So I'll never have an event occur for a random variable x where I go less than negative infinity. So that cannot happen. So the CDF at minus infinity is equal to zero. And then finally, fx of x, the CDF, is a non-decreasing function. What this means is if that I query my CDF at the point x1, and if I query it at the point x2, where x1 is less than or equal to x2, this means my CDF evaluated at x1 will always be less than or equal to my CDF evaluated at x2. So as the argument of the CDF increases, the CDF function itself increases. So let's now talk about the probability density function. Again, for now we're talking about continuous random variables. So the continuous random variable x has a PDF that satisfies the following equation. The notation that we use for the PDF is P sub x. So again, for when dealing with the random variable x, we put the random variable there. And then the argument is little x. So the PDF is a function of just one variable. And the PDF is equal to just the derivative of the CDF. So the CDF and the PDF are related via differentiation. Obviously, as long as the CDF itself is a continuous and differentiable function, if it is not, then this relationship will not hold. But in general, the PDF is just the derivative of the CDF. The CDF had several properties. Since the PDF and the CDF are very much related to each other, it's no surprise that the PDF also has some nice mathematical properties. The first is that the PDF is always greater than or equal to zero. So when you're plotting the probability density function of some random variable, when you plot it, every single point in that plot is always greater than or equal to zero. It can equal zero. There's an equality right here. But it cannot go below zero. And this makes sense. Essentially what we'll see here in this property is that when you integrate the PDF over some region, so right here what we're saying is when you integrate from x1 to x2 of the PDF, that actually tells us the probability that our random variable is greater than or equal to x1 or less than or equal to x2. So basically it tells us the probability that our random variable is in some range. Well, if there's actually some interval where the PDF went less than zero, that means we could integrate over that region and end up with a probability that was less than zero, which doesn't make any sense. Remember when we integrate a function, we're essentially adding up the area. So if the function itself is less than zero, adding up the area gives us a negative area, which would indicate the ne a negative probability in this case. So since we can't have negative probabilities, that means our probability density function is forbidden from ever being less than zero. Another property that we have of the PDF is that when we integrate it over all values, we get one. And that simply follows from, from this again. If we integrate a random variable from minus infinity, or its PDF from minus infinity to infinity, that represents the probability that the random variable is greater than negative infinity and less than infinity. Well, when we do an experiment and we get a number out, we always get out numbers that are bigger than negative infinity, and we always get out numbers that are less than infinity. So this fact right here is really just saying that probability density functions integrate to 1 because this probability of being greater than infinity and less than infinity, I'm sorry, greater than negative infinity and less than infinity is always true. So we've talked about this one quite a bit. When you integrate between x1 and x2, that represents this probability. And that also is shorthand for this. Instead of writing the probability as the probability that a random variable is greater than x1 and less than x2, we can actually write that as a difference of CDFs. Remember what, what this means. The CDF of the random variable x evaluated at the point x2 means the probability that our random variable is less than or equal to x2. So this and this kind of pair up. And then remember what this means. This means when we evaluate the CDF at the point x1, that's the probability that our random variable is less than or equal to x1. So that pairs up with this. So by subtracting these two, 
we're essentially adding up all of the area under the PDF curve between x1 and x2. So these properties of the probability density function are very useful. And here again is the relationship that really just tells us the relationship between PDFs and CDFs. It says if I integrate from minus infinity to x, my probability density function, that is equal to the probability that my random variable is less than or equal to x. But this, by definition, is just the CDF. So these are all very nice properties of our PDF. The PDF basically tells us how our random variable is distributed. If we can plot the PDF, we can look at the PDF and get a feel for what is the likelihood when I do an experiment that my random variable will take on some value. Anywhere where my PDF is a large value, there's a high likelihood of my random variable being at that value. Anywhere where my PDF function has a small value, that indicates that there is a small probability that my random variable will take on that value.